in this class we will discuss about uh, crystal symmetry and uh, symmetry operations so as you can see from here uh, first we will consider uh, the symmetry different symmetries available in crystal okay so first we, first of all uh, we will discuss what is uh, what is meant by this uh, symmetry if you consider any object okay uh, let us consider a circle or you can consider a sphere also no problem so if you consider a circle and if i cut this circle exactly at the half then you can see this portion of your circle is exactly similar to this portion or we can say that is a mirror image of that or we can say uh, this is this line will become axis of symmetry for this case okay which means that this line when this line if you consider passing through the center of this uh, circle and then uh, that will split this circle into two equal parts exactly similar to each other if you consider human body consider human body like this okay now if you consider an axis which is ex passing through this hat like this okay. then you can see uh, on the right side of this line and left side of this line both are same okay the structure are same which means that this will this line will be the axis of symmetry and with respect to that line on the right and on the left we are having same kind of structure so this is the symmetry this is what symmetry means so after some operation uh, or after some kind of uh, uh, methods or, or operations basically so the you'll, you'll be getting similar structure on both sides then we can say this particular object is having that kind of symmetry okay so in crystal symmetry if you consider crystal symmetry this crystal symmetry uh, is decided uh, by various symmetry elements and what are the different symmetry elements available in crystals symmetry elements are plane of symmetry axis of symmetry and center of symmetry three different symmetry or symmetry elements are available in crystals and those are plane of symmetry axis of symmetry and center of symmetry so what is mean by plane of symmetry plane of symmetry is uh, nothing but uh, considering a plane imaginary plane you can consider and that divides the crystal into two parts in such a way that the one of that part will be a mirror image of the other okay and uh, that is the plane of symmetry and if the crystal possess this kind of a symmetry then we call it as or we can say that the crystal is having a plane of symmetry okay so we are considering a plane that cuts the crystal into two parts in such a way that one of the part is exactly or the the mirror image of the other mirror image of the other uh, then we can say that uh, that particular crystal is having plane of symmetry and there are different plane of symmetry also so let us look into this uh, image you can see this this is the plane that we have we have used to cut the crystal structure into half or into two pieces so this is one of the piece above and this is the second piece which is below that plane so you can see this piece is just exactly a mirror image of the piece which is the down which is uh, uh, below this plane okay similarly you can see this plane this plane cuts this crystal structure into half or into two pieces one piece here one piece here rectangular pieces then you can see this uh, this this part of the uh, crystal uh, or the part which is right to that plane will be same or mirror image of that of the part which is to, to the left of that plane Okay. in this way you can uh, you can also consider this plane and that also will cut that crystal structure into half or into two parts 
and if these two parts are having uh, the property that this one of that part will be mirror image of the other then we can say that the crystal is having plane of symmetry if you consider something like this if you cut exactly at this center of this uh, rectangular box in such a way that this part is a mirror image of this one okay then we can call or we can say this crystal is having plane of symmetry but the same sh same shape but if you are cutting that uh, particular uh, rectangle somewhere somewhere here let's say somewhere here then this part is smaller and this part is larger okay so this is uh, let us consider something like this we have to consider plane in this case so if you consider plane like this a plane if you are plane cutting plane is like this then this part will be smaller and this is larger this is larger so in that case this crystal uh, is not having that plane of symmetry in this in this if you are considering this as your plane of plane that cut into uh, the cut this crystal okay uh, that depends that depends uh, on that crystal structure i'm just saying this as considering this as the rectangular box okay so in that case it will not be uh, having that property uh, it also depends on the atoms uh, which are in this crystal structure okay all those things will come to the picture but one side of that uh, plane whether it is above or below whether it is right or left that has to be similar or which has to be a mirror image of the other one then only we can say that uh, the crystal is having that plane of symmetry and as we discussed we are having a rectangular plane of symmetry as well as orthogonal uh, sorry uh, we are having diagonal plane of symmetry and you can see this is the rectangular plane of symmetry after that symmetry operation or or, or if you consider an imaginary plane and you will be getting rectangles on both sides rectangular symmetry but if you consider the plane like along the diagonal of that crystal structure like this then that will cut the crystal into something like this a different shape okay. now we are considering uh, that uh, plane of uh, the cutting plane uh, in along the diagonal along the diagonal and in that case we will get a different shape it is also exactly mirror image one one of this uh, portion will be mirror image of the other so that is also uh, play having that plane of symmetry okay in this way also but uh, not uh, as in the previous case but this is in this case we are considering that uh, uh, cutting plane diagonally to the crystal so we call those uh, kind of uh, symmetry plane symmetry uh, as diagonal plane of symmetry okay now we'll go to the uh, the next one which is the axis of symmetry and in this case axis of symmetry means if uh, if you are considering a line about that line the crystal may be rotated in such a way that its appearance repeated more than once during complete rotation and this is called as axis of symmetry axis of symmetry if you consider uh, for example uh, uh, okay let us uh, discuss that with uh, hexagon itself so that you will be able to understand that more clearly so let us consider again this figures you can see here consider this kind of hexagonal shape so if you rotate this hexagon by 60 degree then you will get the same shape okay so if i rotate this one so i will just draw that same here maybe that is not the having same sides but uh, for hexagon the sides are equal okay uh, so if i rotate this by uh, let's say this is uh, this this is 60 degree this angle is 60 degree so if i rotate this by 60 degree this edge will be going to this one so this point will be at here after 60 degree rotation rotation by means uh, if you consider that three dimensionally then it will be something like this okay. so 
Okay, so if you are considering an axis which is passing through the center of this particular cube, hexagonal cube, then we can uh, uh, have this rotation, this rotation of 60 degree, consider the rotation of 60 degree, like this, with the 60 degree. Then you will be getting this point. So this, the point here will be shifted to this point, and the point here will be shifted to this point. Point here will be shifted to this point, something like that. So that the same shape will be obtained. Whatever the shape uh, it had before, the same shape will be obtained after 60. If you are considering 60 degrees, so if you are continuously rotate that uh, for uh, up to total of 360 degree, 360 degree, you will be getting uh, six times the same shape, same shape six times. Okay. But if you are rotating that by some 30 degree, then what will happen? If you rotate that same by 30 degree, let's say this is your Uh, let us consider this as your hexagon initially like this but if you are rotating that by uh, 30 degree then what will happen then you will be getting a structure like this you will be getting a structure like this so this blue color the blue colored one so this is with the six uh, 30 degree rotation 30 degree rotation. which means that this point will be reaching only up to this okay uh, that is the 30 30 degree rotation we are considering now so this is 30 so after 30 degree rotation it will be reaching at this point so you'll, your shape will be something like this and that shape is not the not similar to that of the initial shape, it is different. So we will be getting some different shape. So original shape, if you are, if you want to get the original shape, you have to rotate it by 60 degree. Okay. And if you continue that rotation up to 360 degree, which is the complete rotation from 0 to 360 degree, within that time, you will be getting same shape six times. Because each 60 degree will be getting same shape. Okay, so for 360 degree rotation, we will be getting six times the same shape if you are considering the kind of a structure. Okay, and that is not possible with 30 degree. You will not get the same shape. Similarly, if you consider this kind of a, a shape, it's a triangle, and if you rotate that, if you rotate this one, you will not be getting that same shape for a complete rotation. You will not get Okay, if you consider 0 to 360 degree, you will not get uh, at any angle, you will not get that this this same shape, this same shape of uh, this uh, triangle, this you will not get. So this does not having rotational symmetry. And if you again consider these uh, rectangles, you can see here, if you, if you consider this original shape, this as your original shape, after 90 degree, if you consider 90 degree means it will reach this point this this part of the rectangle reach at this point so after 90 degree you will be getting this kind of a shape and again if you rotate it will be coming to this shape so this is similar to that uh, previous or the first or initial shape initial shape is similar to this one so which means that after 180 degree rotation only you will be getting the same shape again if you rotate this one then again it will be coming this side so you will be getting this kind of a structure and if you again rotate this one with 90 degree so that this come above and it will be like this after uh, after 90 degree rotation okay so then you will be getting this kind of a shape and that is similar or same as that of the initial or original shape so after 360 degree you will be getting two times the same shape you will be getting two times so this is 
having an order of rotational symmetry with the two order of uh, rotational symmetry is two here because you are getting a same shape or original shape two times within a complete rotation from 0 to 360 degree and we call this uh, also this uh, if you consider that the axis of rotation then we call this as a two fold axis this is having two fold axis which means that within one complete rotation you will be getting two times uh, the same original shape and we have different kinds of uh, rotation symmetry or uh, different kinds of axis or axis of rotation so if you consider this uh, case we already discussed with this case uh, that is having uh, six number of times you will be getting the same shape uh, within one complete rotation which is 360 by 6 60 that is 6 and we call this as six fold axis and in this case if you consider this uh, uh, this kind of a cubic structure and if you rotate that by one uh, sorry 90 degree to rotate that by 90 degree then uh, also we will be getting the same shape right so this point will reach this point after rotation of 90 degree and uh, so that 360 by 90 will be the number of times that same shape will be you can observe that is uh, this is four and this is four fold axis symmetry four fold axis symmetry Similarly, here also, this is passing through this uh, edge, as you can see these two edges and each 120 degree rotation will be getting same shape so that this, is, this will become three fold axis of symmetry because you will be getting three times the same shape within one complete rotation and again if you consider this one, this is passing through the middle of this edge, this particular edge and here also it is passing through the middle of this edge. And if you rotate this one, and you will be getting same shape after 180 degree rotation, so that you will be having a two-fold axis that is 360 by 180. So that is the different uh, kind of uh, rotation symmetries are there in crystal structure. Okay. So that's about uh, the uh, symmetry axis. So if you are considering n-fold, in general, if you consider n-fold axis. And uh, if you are considering uh, the crystal structure which is uh, repeated its original form after every 360 degree by n angle, 360 by n angle, then which is called as an n-fold axis. So in the first case we have discussed 360 by uh, 6, this is the angle of symmetry. You can see. So within this, uh, if you are considering 60 degree, then it will come to the original shape. Okay. Then if you get this kind of uh, formula, then you can say this is a six fold axis. This is N and that is N fold axis. So that is N fold axis of symmetry. And But if you consider the axis of rotation again, you will not be getting all the, all those uh, numbers you will not be especially you will not be able to observe the five fold axis why five fold axis is not possible if you consider the uh, we can consider four lattice points here okay and let us consider this x x a sorry x p q this is p and q then we are having y these are lattice points so first we consider a translation of this x at this point to somewhere here with that translation vector a and similarly this uh, sorry not this uh, not x we have to consider p so let us consider this p is uh, having a translation from this point to here and this Q is also having a translation from here to here with the translation vector A. And let us consider these two points also. These are at R and S. This is R, this is S.
So we are considering a translation of A and uh, that is uh, also with uh, some rotation phi n. Okay, let us rotate this uh, vector. Uh, first we are considering P and this vector Qy with uh, phi n. So this uh, lattice is having uh, uh, translation that is translation of A and the lattice have n fold rotation ok. So let us uh, consider this uh, ok let us consider the like this P this is your P this is your Q and this is translated with uh, uh, A translation. Uh, let us consider lattice translation of A and this is also A, right? And after that translation, we are rotating that by phi n. Just zoom it. So after that translation, we will just uh, rotate that by phi n. So after this transfer, so first we are considering this P, then translating into this X with the translation vector A, then we rotate that particular one like this with an angle of phi n and it will reach somewhere, uh, let's say R, okay, that is this tag. And then similarly we are having Q here translated to Y then rotate into somewhere here that is S, okay. So with an angle of rotation phi n and uh, so since this is A, this one also will be A, this vector also will be A. This is translation A, so this one magnitude also will be A. Now if you consider uh, the values here, you can see this is phi n and this one will be phi n this one will be this angle this angle I am saying this angle will be phi by 2 minus phi n ninety minus phi n because this total is 90 right because when you consider this one this total is 90 and this is phi n, so pi by 2 minus phi n will be the same. And if you apply this uh, theorem, then uh, we'll get uh, here. Let's say this is p1, this is uh, q1. Okay. Then what will be p1 r? Or we can uh, consider sine theta here. Sine theta sine of this angle. That is sine of this uh, pi by 2 minus phi n. Uh, then we will be getting uh, this this uh, this particular side that is p1 r that is opposite side by hypotenuse. So this is p1 r by hypotenuse. That is hypotenuse is p1 p or p p1. And this can be written as cos phi, cos phi, because uh, sine pi by 2 minus phi n, you check that, that will become cos phi. Okay, so that is uh, cos phi n, p1 r by p p1, and p p1 is nothing but a, so this is p1 r by a or you can say p1 r equal to a times cos phi. Similarly consider uh, the other side also for q to q1 there also we will get cos phi n which is equal to in this case let us say this is uh, this is s so this is s q1 divided by q q1 we are talking about this side. So we'll be getting x q1 divided by a that implies s q1 equal to a times cos phi n.
now let us consider p1 q1 so this p1 q1 will be p1 r plus r plus s plus s plus q oh, or sorry plus p1 r plus the second segment is rs rs plus then third one is sq sq so if you add all those then you will get p1 q now what is p1 r p1 r is nothing but a cos phi n s cos phi n plus second one is a cos phi n rs is also we can sorry not rs xq1 is a cos phi n and then plus rs will be getting rs sq1 is a q a cos phi n that we have already here these two now what is rs what will be rs rs is nothing but if you can see here rs has to be this one this this distance that is same as uh, the lattice constant a right because two two lattice points are separated by the same distance a so uh, rs is a so this will become a cos phi n so two times a cos phi n there have, have to add this two plus a this is p1 q Now from this, we can say this uh, p this p one q one is equal to two a cos phi n plus a, and this has to be this p one q one. You can see this this uh, top of top lattice this p one q one this distance, and what is this distance? This is also a lattice. So when you consider this is as another lattice. Then it p one q one has to be a multiple of a, right? Because we are having lattice constant a. So if you consider any lattice, so that has to be let's consider it as like this. This is your lattice constant a. So if you consider this lattice any of this length up to this point, and this is your p, and this is your q, something like that. And then uh, you can see this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a. All of them are a, so this must be an integral multiple of a. Let's say m is an integral uh, integer value. Then it has to be multiplied with uh, this a. That will be the length m times a, right? If you consider any lattice. So if you consider this p1 q1, that also should follow this condition m times a. So in that case, this value that you are getting that has to be m times a. integer multiple of lattice constant a and then we have uh, this from this we can write uh, this from this it will be a times 2 cos phi n plus 1 this will be m times a this a and this a will get cancelled so we will get 2 cos phi n equal to m minus 1 we take 1 other side and then cos phi n will be cos phi n will be m minus 1 by 2 for this m minus 1 i will write capital n by 2 so n is equal to mod minus 1 so this condition has to be satisfied for that uh, axis symmetry now if you give different values for this n Let us consider n equal to two, n equal to one, n equal to zero. What will be the phi? Phi n will be cos inverse. So cos phi is n by two. Cos phi n is equal to n by two, capital n by two, and phi n will be cos inverse n by two. Now when n equal to two, n by two will become one, right? So let us take this as a set table. N equal to two. N by two is one, and cos inverse of n by two. What will be this? Cos inverse of one. Cos inverse of one. What is the value? That is cos inverse of one is 
what is that cos inverse of 1 uh, in this case uh, sorry this one is 2 and phi n will be yeah yes right so this is cos inverse of 1 uh, cos inverse of 1 will be 60 Is this right? Cos inverse, or you can uh, you can directly calculate cos phi. Cos phi is uh, cos phi is one. So cos phi is okay. Cos phi is one means this has to be three sixty, right? This one be three sixty. Uh, because uh, you can directly give n by two here. N by two will become one. So cos phi is one, and cos phi be cos phi will be one then you have to take the inverse of that then uh, uh, we'll be having 1 when n equal to 1 cos phi n will become 1 by 2 cos phi n is 1 by 2 and in that case it will become 6 this is 1 by 2 n by 2 will be 1 by 2 and that is corresponding to cos 60 and then we have uh, the third one that is 0 cos 0 n by 2 will become 0 uh, that is cos inverse 0 and cos inverse 0 is 90 then you can also have minus 1 minus 2 values here so minus 1 means uh, in that case it will become minus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 will be getting 120 and for uh, plus 1 by 2 uh, sorry this is minus 1 minus 1 that is cos inverse of minus 1 that is 180 so these are the angles so when you apply this particular equation this particular condition or equation you can see we don't have that five fold symmetry five fold symmetry is not possible how we can say that from this you have to calculate the fold n fold symmetry and n fold symmetry n is 360 divided by the angle 360 by n is the angle and if you if you want to calculate n then n will be 360 by that of angle and if you calculate that for this case then 360 by 360 is 1 360 by 60 that is 6 360 by 90 that is 4 360 by 120 is 2 oh, sorry this, this is 3 360 by 8 180 is 2 so this is what you will get okay you you cannot observe 5 here 5 will not be available so 5 fold uh, axis symmetry that is not possible okay so the possible values of n can be obtained such that uh, cos phi n lies between minus 1 and uh, plus 1 you can see cos phi n values and uh, so this is these are the values cos phi n means n by 2 cos phi n is n by 2 so these are the available values for cos phi n and the values must be between 1 and minus 1 you, see, you can see cos theta has to be varied from 1 and minus 1 and within this we will not be having uh, that five fold. Okay. Okay. Now we'll uh, go to the uh, next symmetry. That is the center of symmetry. Center of symmetry is much more simple. If you consider a crystal structure, and uh, if you consider the center of that, for example, in this case, this cubic structure. If you consider that. The center of symmetry in such that is uh, such a point it is a point that any line drawn through it touches the surface of the crystal at the equal distance so you consider this center draw a line to this side draw a line to the other side opposite of that and that too will touch the plane of that crystal with the same distance so this if you consider this center and if you go up and it will touch at this plane of the crystal and what is that distance 
of this line from the center to that plane that will be same as the line from that center to the other direction the plane at the other direction if these two are same then the crystal is having center of symmetry so in the other ways if you consider this one this is a two dimensional case uh, so if you consider a, a point here and if you draw this this is not a center of symmetry this point is not center of symmetry because you are having a distance which is smaller to the right as compared to the left but when you consider a cubic structure or if you consider this at this point center this is your point then the distance from this point to this uh, end or this plane will be same as the distance from this point center to this plane then this is uh, this crystal is having center of symmetry so consider a point Uh, the center of symmetry is a point this point in such a way that any line drawn from through that point touches the surface of the crystal at equal distance then we can say that uh, the crystal is having center of symmetry and now we'll go to the uh, symmetry operation symmetry operation uh, symmetry operations are the operation when applied to a crystal that leaves the crystal invariant that is environment of the crystal structure remains the same so after the operation if you do any operation the environment of the crystal remains the same then we call it as a symmetry operation you do some operation after the operation the crystal symmetry crystal uh, surroundings or the environment will be same then we call it as a symmetry operation and this symmetry operation involves uh, translation reflection rotation and inversion translation rotation reflection rotation and inversion so in translation operation what we'll do uh, it, it, it is the uh, symmetry operation we call it as translation symmetry operation translation symmetry operation uh, which when applied to a lattice that is point gives new lattice point that has identical surroundings like the first lattice point so let us uh, consider uh, this case uh, this is this is not complete i will show some other diagram so let us consider this case we are having different uh, number of lattice points here let us consider a crystal structure like this So all these are filled with atoms and all those things. I hope you know that. So in this lattice point, if I if I consider this point, if I move this point from here to here, that is translation. Okay, and the translation vector here is, uh, let's say t equal to some a, a one. That is the translation vector here, a one. So if I move this point, at least last point to this point, what will happen to the surroundings? Surroundings will not change. Whatever uh, we are having surroundings here in for this at this point, we are having uh, uh, points like this here. Okay, that is the surrounding of that lattice point. For lattice point number one, this lattice point I am saying, we are having a point here, 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 point here. lattice points. So surroundings. is like this for the first lattice point after that i am translating uh, this translate uh, a translation is performed in such a way that this lattice point moved to this lattice point or the, the, the uh, this point shifted towards this point and now we if you consider the surroundings what will be the surrounding of that lattice point now this is our lattice point and if you consider the surrounding you can see these are the surrounding lattice point so the surrounding of that point after translation it will be similar to that of the uh, surroundings uh, or the environment of the first lattice point okay so before translation and after translation the surroundings or the environment is same of the crystal is same then we call such translation as translation symmetry operation or symmetric translation operation which means that the the 
surrounding or the environment is not changing because of that translation then that is a symmetry translation operation similarly if you consider a reflection operation symmetry reflection or reflection symmetry operation in this case also we are having same kind of scenario but here we are considering uh, a crystal which is divided into two identical halves which are mirror image to each other that is the operation which are mirror image to each other so after uh, dividing that crystal structure into two parts if one of the part is a mirror image of the other one then it is uh, reflection symmetry operation reflection symmetry operation so if you consider this case here we are having a uh, number of points you can see so i will draw it here let's say something like this this is your lattice point and if i cut this uh, this crystal exactly at this point this portion okay then i can observe that after that operation so i am just uh, uh, dividing that crystal into two parts and after that operation i am getting what i am whatever i am getting this side is a mirror image of this side whatever i am getting on one side is the mirror image of the other then we can say that it is a reflection symmetry operation reflection symmetry operation whatever we are getting on one one side it will be the similar uh, a mirror image of the other one okay so after that operation if you are getting a mirror image the one side of that crystal is a mirror image of the other then we can say that it is a reflection symmetry operation reflection symmetry operation so after the operation we will be getting a mirror image of the other and the third one is the rotational symmetry and in the case of rotation symmetry after uh, rotation operation rotating the crystal by some angle theta or phi about an axis resulting or transforming the lattice to itself after rotation if you are if you are getting same lattice then we call it as a rotation symmetry operation or symmetry rotation operation which means that the the, the structure of the entire crystal will not be affected by any of these operations okay so rotation if you consider rotation of uh, the crystal structure about an angle with the angle theta and after that rotation if the crystal structure remains as such as the previous state uh, uh, as the previous uh, form then we can say that it is a rotation symmetry operation which means that even if you rotate that one with that much of angle the structure of the crystal remains the same okay that is the operation and this will be provided only with uh, the crystals having this kind of symmetry rotational symmetry if you are having rotation symmetry then if you are applying some operation rotational operation and if you the, if you are getting same structure after some theta degree then we can say that is a rotational symmetry operation and the last one is the inversion symmetry operation inversion symmetry operation and in this case a crystal lattice is said to have said to have inversion symmetry if if after every lattice point at position r uh, sorry this is for every for every lattice point at position r there exists a lattice point at position minus r that is the condition for every lattice point at r there is just a lattice point at minus r okay then we can say the crystal is having an inversion symmetry the crystal is having an inversion symmetry okay this is applicable to 3d lattice only and this is also called as point operation so after inversion operation the crystal remains in the same form then such inversion operations are called as inversion symmetry operations 
so if the crystal is having inversion symmetry what is inversion symmetry so if you consider a cubic structure like this cubic structure like this let's consider this is a center and from this center oh let's say if you measure this uh, this atom position of this atom which is at distance r and if you consider minus r from the same point in the opposite direction if you consider minus r like this okay i am talking about this vector minus r so if you are drawing minus r then if you can get a lattice point at that point uh, that direction also with the same distance then we can say that the crystal is having inversion symmetry so if i consider a point at minus r if i am having another point p2 lattice point at minus r then we can say this is having uh, inversion symmetry if you change r to minus r that is the inversion process then uh, if you are getting same kind of lattice point in that position also then we can say the crystal is having inversion symmetry okay uh, you can also consider this as x y z point and then you will be getting this one at minus x minus y minus z position if you are getting same kind of lattice point at the same distance in the opposite direction then we can say the crystal is having inversion symmetry and if you do some operation some translation operation from one lattice point to another lattice point okay so after that inversion operation after inversion operation uh, the crystal remains in the same same form so if you are, in this case if you are considering uh, this is your crystal structure okay now i am just uh, taking one of this lattice point or the atom here and this red one and taking that into this position and uh, this one is into this one or you can consider that way also so if if you do that kind of operation that is lattice point at r is replaced with the lattice point at minus r till you are getting the same kind of uh, crystal structure then we can say that this crystal structure is having inversion symmetry and the operation is symmetry inversion symmetry operation now if you consider some other case uh let us okay let us consider some other shape let's consider something like this okay so now my structure is like this i'm just uh, talking about some structure this is this may not be a crystal structure okay and i am measuring this uh, so if if i move this particular point from this uh, from this to some distance r in this direction So let us take this uh, maybe okay let, let us say this is the this is the point where i will measure this r so the, this is the dis, this is at distance r and if i take this r to minus r okay minus r then i will be i will be getting that point here and i my crystal structure will be like this now so initially it was like this and uh, the after that uh, inversion transformation inversion operation then it will become like this so the structure is going to change after inversion operation okay uh, so that that kind of uh, structure also available and uh, if if you consider uh, any other structure 
and uh, if you consider this kind of inversion operation okay so after this inversion operation inversion operation means r changing to minus a position of that lattice point changing to minus r and you are getting something different some different structure if you are getting some different structure then it is uh, that crystal structure is having is not having inversion symmetry if you are getting same kind of structure then you will be uh, having that crystal is having inversion symmetry and that operation of changing plus r to minus r lattice point from plus r to minus r is called as inversion operation and if it is uh, giving you the same structure then it is a symmetric inversion operation or inversion symmetry operation because the crystal structure will not change it is shape because of inversion operation okay. and some other uh, important operations uh, which is which which is nothing but a combination of these symmetry elements uh, for example you can consider a rotation inversion axis so rotation inversion axis so what is this in this case uh, a crystal is uh, said to have this kind of a rotation inversion axis if it is uh, brought into the self coincident uh, coincidence or the same shape by rotation followed by an inversion about a lattice point through which the rotation uh, axis process okay and in that case you can consider this as uh, this crystal is having rotation inversion axis so we are considering both uh, operation at the same time rotation as well as inversion okay uh, so let us uh, uh, consider an example for this if you consider something like this in case of rotation inversion operation let us consider something like this and let's consider some points 1 1 2 3 and first i will rotate this one this one point 1 i am rotating in this direction and then i take inverse inverse means if you consider this as your center inverse of this will be this point will reach at this point right so first i am rotating from here to here about this axis point and then so first after rotation this one point lattice one will lattice point one will reach at this position four then i will take inversion inversion will reach after inversion it will reach at two okay again i will rotate this two then where it will reach so i am rotating in this direction so again if i rotate this one if i rotate again this one it will reach at this one and taking inverse then it will reach at this point 3 again i will rotate uh, that one so just some different color so this 3 i will rotate in this direction and translation will leave so then it will reach at 4 again i will rotate so that uh, this point will reach at 3 rotating in the same direction in the anti clockwise direction it will reach at 3 and then inversion inversion will give you the same structure one so now that point reaches one and the structure of the crystal or this in this case this uh, initial structure that we have considered uh, by which this lattice point is at one that retained okay so here we are having two different operation rotation as well as inversion combined together so first rotating then inversing and then if you continue that process after some time after some uh, number of process then it will retain its original shape then we can say that this uh, crystal is having rotation inversion axis or it is having rotation inversion symmetry okay 
so that's about uh, rotation inversion uh, and uh, we'll uh, use uh, different notations for rotation inversion uh, that you can look okay and then we consider uh, okay if you if you consider uh, uh, in this case the crystals in this case the crystals can possess uh, 1 2 3 and uh, 4 6 fold rotation any crystal if you consider it, that can have this kind of rotations 1 2 3 4 6 and if you consider rotation inversion then we represent this by 1 2 3 4 6 like that. so uh, which means that if you are considering um, let's say hexagonal case hexagonal case right something like this and in that case we have already discussed the uh, it is having six fold axis which means that the the same shape will be repeated six times within one complete rotation so if it is six fold rotation and if you consider inversion symmetry also available rotation inversion symmetry av available in that case then we represent it by six bar which means that it is having uh, six fold axis as well as inversion both rotation inverse so which means that rotation inverse axis is uh, present in that particular case then that axis is represented by six bar okay similarly if, uh, for this uh, the, in this case what will be that 120 degree okay threefold and it is so if it is possessing that inversion uh, symmetry also along with the rotation let's see so rotation inversion axis if rotation uh, inversion symmetry is possible with the uh, three fold axis which means that uh, the number of uh, uh, times three times it will come within one complete rotations the same shape will uh, be repeated so this is threefold and if it's, uh, it is having this kind of rotation inversion then we represent it as three bar okay that is just a rotation for rotation inversion axis and similarly